All right, let's go ahead and get started with the efficient net. So efficient net was developed by scaling up the base architecture using the compound scaling method that optimizes network depth, width and resolution. So this sentence be, might seem you a complicated, but let me explain you how uh, this efficient net works. First of all, the concept was efficient net to make a single network which can work on the computer devices as well as the mobile devices. Why so? Mobile devices have memory and energy constraint. They have very limited memory. They have very limited energy because they are battery powered devices. And mobile devices also have very uh, less computation power as compared to desktop or computer applications. So scientists developed efficient net. There were various version of the efficient net like B0, B1, B2 till the B7. In this case, B0 was the base model and they kept scaling up the models till the B7. And B7 had achieved the best accuracy with the less number of the parameters. So there were the many concepts which scientists actually introduced with the efficient net network. They introduced the concepts of the width scaling, depth scaling, resolution scaling and the compound scaling. So what is this depth scaling? In depth scaling, they, they increase the depth of the network there. Basically, they increase the number of the channel so that you so that the efficient net efficient net can learn more complex patterns there and uh, depth scaling was there to add more number of layers in your network again the concept was to 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 make sure that it learns more complex features with the better accuracy and the resolution is scaling. The concept of the resolution is scaling was to make sure that your network inference is fast and training is also fast because with the resolution scaling, they were able to control total number of, total number of parameters for the multiplication and addition there. So this resolution is scaling is basically that how much resolution your image have there, x by y to x divided by 2 to y by 2 or even if you want to give even a smaller image so for that you can control these things with the resolution scaling and with the help of the compound scaling they suggested that you can select a particular resolution like if your image have 56 cross 56 pixels only you can also control the depth of your uh, network and width of your network. So all these things simultaneously can be controlled using the compound scaling there. So here is the graph for the efficiency of the efficient net and the total number of parameters are also compared here. Traditional networks like the ResNet, Inceptions and uh, other networks like Exceptions the accuracy of these networks were, were always less than 80%. This was kind of a baseline, upper baseline for these networks, upper lines. So they were always having less accuracy. And the number of parameters were also increasing as the number of accuracy were, uh, as the accuracy were increasing for these models. In fact, the number of parameters were increasing more rapidly than their accuracy. But in, but, but in the case of the efficient net, this increased there drastically there. It's like the exponential growth here. We can see with the baseline B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6 and the B7. We don't see the much of the, you know, uh, the accuracy improvement over B6 and the B7 as compared to the million of the parameters as it increased there. For, for the case of the B6, it was around the 40 million, but for the case of B7, it reached around the 70 million. So it increased drastically in the case of the B7, but if you see the B0 to B4, so B0 had almost uh, 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 less than 10 million parameters, but B4 had almost 20 million parameters, but accuracy got jumped from almost uh, uh, 77 to uh, 83 or something like that. 
So there was a huge increment in accuracy in case of the B0 to B4 with increasing very less number of the parameters for the efficient net. Other accuracies are compared here if you see the ResNet 152 had 60 million parameters while efficient net B1 had just 7.1, uh, 7.8 million parameter with better accuracy. And the similarly you can see there uh, SCNet, SCNet was the skews and the expansion net there. So these skews and the expand uh, uh, the network had 146 million parameter with the 82.7% accuracy and efficient net B4 had almost the same kind of accuracy with only less number of parameter. So in any case, efficient net was doing much more, uh, uh, I mean, it was doing better with almost 10% parameter or 15% parameter with the almost same accuracy there. So this efficient net makes sure that you can use a single kind of the network with the various scaling on the mobile applications and uh, computer applications there. All right, let's go ahead and try to see its uh, technical part of uh, efficient net. In efficient net, they introduced their MB convolutional block. So this is the kind of the heart of efficient net. So this MB convolutional block, we are gonna actually discuss those here. But before that, I'm just gonna write those MB convolutional block here. So this MB convolutional block was expired by the efficient nets, uh, efficient nets squeeze and excitation module and also it used their inverted residual block. So basically you can say that this MB con block which we are gonna see in efficient net, it was the combination of here skews and uh, excitation block. I, I, I'm just going to say here SE block, all right? All right, so it was the uh, SE block it has there. Oh, sorry, this shouldn't be there. It has here uh, skews and uh, uh, excitation block. Uh, we are just gonna write it as SC block in sort. And it also was the combination of here inverted residual network. Uh, the, these two things we will see the later but this is kind of the heart of your efficient net neural network. So in the expansion part, all right, in expansion page, before going through the uh, 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 skewed, I mean this SC block, it does their uh, expansion where it apply one by one convolutional filter. Just before going, uh, uh, before that, this one cross one convolutional layer helps to expand the number of channels. So you can say that this one cross one CNN, I'm just gonna uh, write the name here from here in fact, one cross one CNN, this actually expand the number of channel here. Thereafter, a depth-wise convolutional neural network is applied, then it moved to the depth-wise convolutional neural network is used. Generally, the size of depth-wise convolutional neural network is 3 by 3 to 5 cross 5. Thereafter, a batch normalization and uh, Thereafter, uh, SE net is used there. This SE network is used. So this SE network actually recalibrate the channel-wise feature response using the global information. 
in this generally a global average pooling is used and uh, uh, and uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, the one and the two type of the activation functions are also used in sc module thereafter the projection phase comes and then again the batch normalization activation and then finally skip connections and thereafter uh, scaling happens let's go ahead and see these details of the efficient net how these things happens so what you see here at the first image in the figure one you are seeing here you are seeing here a c block so in a c block how this happens let's say you have your input something like this then a uh, 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 filter is applied you get a block of something like this thereafter a c module is applied here in a c module now in previous uh, 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 here we had seen there is a skip connection and then there is a c module so this whole thing you can see there there is a skip connection then this a c module is there and then finally this scaling is happening so basically why this why this a c module is needed here suppose that you have here an image all right so this image is actually let's say a green image moreover uh, uh, you say it this image is actually the grass image and uh, there are three channel in your image x and y is height and width of your channel here so this image is made up of red green and blue so if it is green then obviously this green part or green channel is very high so the component of green is dominant in this case but if we do a general uh, convolutional neural network then filter is applied here to a full layer i mean to all channels then whatever the output comes then those are summed there in that case this information is lost there so that particular problem we can overcome with the help of this sc network there so in case of sc network what happens here it actually apply their one cross one convolutional neural network and it increases the number of channels so that it can see their more number of parameters and more complex parameters thereafter average pooling and uh, if you check that we hear so after this a global average pooling happens then a fully connected a, a small fully connected neural network is connected then a relu network is connected then again a fully connected neural network is added and then sigmoid network is added so with the help of this whole thing whatever you see there in fact this whole thing we are seeing here at this particular place and this one is here one cross one cross c all right so with the help of this block and this block now we are able to excite here a particular set of channels which are dominant in your image suppose that if you have somewhere these purples you can see these purple channels are quite dominant there let's say if you have any image in the in, in that particular image there are the channels where you have a purple a purple channels which are kind of the dominant in your image so these are actually excited there these channels are excited here so thereafter thereafter this sc block here then uh, scaling parameters happens here for the efficient net so in efficient net we have b0 b1 b2 so this scaling is actually defined with some parameter like 0.5 0.25 or 0.67 something like that so so these scalings happens there so this sc block if you use this sc block with other networks like the inception block and the residual block in that the people has seen that i why adding these block i mean by exciting these channels there in the traditional networks this excitation has increased the accuracy of the model there all right 
perfect so this is the building this is the overall working concept for the efficient net in coming lectures we will be seeing how you can build efficient net mobile net with your with, with your keras and in python all right this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this i'll see you in next one